Just expand a little bit more on some of the points that Ben was making there in the company of our chief reporter, Carve Solical. Good afternoon. As Ben said, there are a few technicalities which probably explains why there is a little bit of a delay. Yeah, I mean, the reason for the delay is that uh, sporting need to make sure that everything is done properly, that they're happy with all the paperwork before it is officially announced. They've also got to inform the Portuguese uh, stock exchange as well. Look, we were told yesterday that from Sporting's perspective, the deal was done. It was a done deal. They've known all along that Ruben Amarim wants to go to Manchester United and they've known that there's very little they can do about it because he's got this release clause. But once United told them earlier this week that they wanted to trigger that release clause, then Sporting's mindset was, OK, he's going. But we've got to make sure that our interests are protected and respected. And that is why talks began about an extra uh, compensation payment, also compensation payments for the coaches Amarin wants to take with him, and also this notice period. Now, to begin with, my information yesterday was that Sporting wanted to keep Amarin for his full notice period, so effectively for another month but they were willing to negotiate. And I think the middle ground, I was told uh, yesterday lunchtime, could be this international break. And this is what Sporting are doing. They are saying, look, we don't want him to leave straight away to hop on a private jet and fly to Manchester and be paraded to United fans uh, before the Chelsea game. We need him here for our next three games. We've got a game tomorrow night against Estrella. We've got a very important Champions League game on Tuesday against Manchester City. Then a week on Sunday, we're away at Braga. Once those three games are out of the way, he can leave. And that is what is going to happen. And that is what will be confirmed today. So, so how do you see this next 10 days or so until he officially starts as a Manchester United manager taking shape for him and for sporting as a club? Well, it's going to be very strange uh, for the club and also for him. Starting in, what, less than an hour's time when he's going to be holding a news conference. Uh, we're there. Gail Davis, my colleague, is there. She'll be asking him questions. But I think the next few days and weeks will prove that he has the personality and the character to be the manager of Manchester United. I'm not saying he's going to be a success. Let's wait and see, because we've been down this road before with other people who we've thought were going to be a success. But I feel that he's got the respect of sporting fans and he's the kind of character who can pull this off. It's going to be very tricky for him because he's going to have... He's going to be wearing two hats for the next sort of 10 days or so. And the game against Manchester City, there's going to be so much interest uh, in that. But I think he can handle it. Uh, as regards the club, I think they're a little bit disappointed, of course, that he's leaving, uh, you know, at the start of the season after just nine or 10 games. They're expecting him to stay until at least the summer. But... They have a succession plan in place and they've always known that he was going to leave. He's so highly respected and highly regarded. Uh, people at Sporting saying to me he's the new special one. He's regarded in Portugal as being the best Portuguese manager uh, since Jose Mourinho. And they are used... No pressure. Yeah, they're used to exporting their managers and their players. They're very proud of the fact that Portugal has produced a player as great as Cristiano Ronaldo, a manager as great as Jose Mourinho. And I think Ruben Amarim could be somebody who we could be talking about in the next few years uh, in the same sort of uh, breath as people like Jose Mourinho. I mean, it's a massive challenge for him, but he had a pretty big challenge at Sporting and uh, he's been very successful during his time there. We'll clip that up and remind you of it in a couple of seasons, Carve. Yeah, depending on how he does at Manchester United. But it, it's interesting you said there that, that Sporting are proud, that there is an expectation that if you succeed at a club like Sporting, eventually a bigger club will come calling. And we saw something similar, I guess, at the end of last season when Arna Slot got a, a lovely send-off before he headed off to Liverpool. You'd expect to see that from the Sporting fans in the next week or so. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Let's wait and see. I, I was told that the atmosphere uh, at uh, the game on Tuesday night, I think it was, that they played, that was like a funeral, apparently, at their stadium. Uh, the people celebrating in Portugal at the moment are Porto and Benfica <laughs> fans. They're absolutely delighted that he is going. But I think there'll be mixed emotions. On the one hand, sporting fans, of course, are really upset and disappointed that he's leaving. 
But I think, on the other hand, they are very, very proud that a club of the stature of Manchester United have come in for their head coach.